That's better. Hello, hello everybody. How are you? Good to see you all. Hope you're doing well. If you're not, I hope we can provide some light entertainment for you because that tends to be the way we roll here. Light entertainment. Yeah. <laughs> Anyway, the weird spots here are because I have some cute little Christmas lights which I've been looking for for a while. Well, actually, I just wanted some cute lights. Um, the ones that are, have kind of a, um, a frosted white um, outer on them and so when they light up, the whole thing glows more rather than just a point of colour like you normally have with the LED ones. I'll turn them on for you and you can see why I'm not actually using them today. Just a moment. See? They look weird. <laughs> Very weird. Um, so I will not be using those but I have not yet taken them down from where I have them set up. Oh, that's that's a neat idea. I can turn those on and off with my foot. <laughs> the things you discover along the way. Never quite the things you expect to discover along the way, but that's part of discovery, isn't it? Right, so I've said that before, I'm sure. That's another one of those words I say all the time, isn't it? Right. I say um, and I say right. I don't know why. It just is. That's just the way it is. Um, <laughs> Speaking of which, I, as you can see, I've managed to move the little sh box shelf over that way a little bit further so it's not immediately behind me. Um, and I did it again. <sighs> and because I'm sitting on this um, nice for, for when you're sitting down for hours at a time cushion, it means I'm sitting slightly higher, which means that you get to see the beam the rafter a lot more than you used to. I can't trim that out without actually taking the side off the picture and losing my arm when because I wave my arms around, you know, all that sort of stuff. <sighs> we'll get there, we'll get there. Right, I haven't done anything more to my, um, old, um, there's that word again, my other layouts on my other monitor. I haven't figured out yet what it was I was meant to be doing there. I was trying to get back to what it used to be before I did the latest update and I can't remember the way I had it. So what I am going to do while you're here with me is I am going to do a print screen and then swap to the other um, monitor tab and do another print screen. Did you know that if you are in, uh, if you're using a Windows computer with a, a normal sort of a keyboard, not all laptop ones have it. If you hold down the Windows key and hit the print screen button, it will save the image that you have just captured to a folder. You do not have to then remember to save it before you do another print screen. Then you can go back through the folder and find the ones that you want and crop them. So yes, you've got, if you've got a twin monitor set up, a dual monitor set up, you will get both screens showing in that image. But it's way, way quicker and easier to do that and then chop out the bits you don't want later on than to try and remember that you've got to save it when you're in the middle of doing something, which is what print screen's for, um, and then save it and remember where to save it to because your computer's wanting to save it to a different place to what you saved the last document you saved and all that sort of stupid stuff that takes too long. So these are all things you can do to actually enhance uh, your workflow apparently you know that, those sort of key words <laughs> right so what are we up to today we are no that's not the one I wanted to tweak right uh, what are we doing today I'm going to be reading some more of the folk tales I shall also be attempting to do a little bit of crafty stuff if I can manage to fit fit it in time-wise. I should be able to fit it in time-wise. The weather's warming up here. I haven't yet got the skylights open again because we had really bad rain yesterday and you, know, it's, you get a little bit cautious when you've had a really bad rain day and a power cut. Um, power cut was made within the house, not actually a municipal one. But that's because we had the electrician here and something was up with our hot water cylinder. So he went to test that and the hot water cylinder control that actually, not the cylinder itself, but the, there's a municipal part of the system. It's actually beyond municipal. It's a national part of the system where they used to 
reduce power consumption to um, kind of like every alternate house or one out of every so many houses for water heating overnight when most people aren't using it to cut down the power consumption across the board and it was it's something that's just part of the New Zealand system and so what they would do is they had a little gadgety thing somewhere within the system which meant that they could send a signal down the power line and it would cause your hot water cylinder to run at either super low temperatures or just not run for a certain amount of time and then it would come back on again and it was all done automatically and it didn't actually inconvenience a lot of people because the middle of the night most people are not up using hours and hours and hours worth of hot water for it to need to be reheated again and that that worked it all out it made a lot of sense but it's not something apparently that they tend to actually be actioning anymore and so therefore the fact that this little gadget popped um, isn't a problem and so our electrician friend was able to bypass it but that had been why I suddenly went offline yesterday right to what at thankfully at the very end of a meeting I was doing online but it's okay because I wasn't running that one so it was okay to not be there for that part of it I would just been thinking how am I going to get out of the last part of the meeting because I don't really need to be here anymore I'm not contributing anything useful I'm not learning anything useful I'm just being one of numbers and then poof the power went off the light I knew it was the power because my two lights had gone off as well the ones for my um, stream setup. These ones, if I turn them off, I disappear into the dark. Watch this. See? <laughs> Those lights. And just in case you're wondering, I have actually discussed this before, but it was a long, long time ago. Um, a lot of people on, oh, I'll back that up slightly. No, before I do. Hi people on YouTube, how are you? Great to have you here. Great to have you listening to the stories. Just remember, this is me chatting with my friends and reading stories to them. This is not an audiobook narration that is being done in a um, sound sterile space, okay? So that means I get to chat with my friends, interrupt my story reading to tell them all sorts of stuff and do various bits and pieces, snacks and all sorts of things. Um, and you're welcome to actually be more actively part of that by either commenting on the videos, keep it nice please because they are meant to be f available for anyone to read, families as well. Um, but also if you want to actually be involved specifically with what I do, get involved with the chat and everything like that, then go to this link here, this one, this one, this link, over on Twitch. Have a look at when the schedule says that I'm next going to be live and make sure you're registered for, for Twitch and signed in. It's free to do so, a little bit like YouTube. Um, and then if you find go go back to this link here after you've registered and signed in and if you follow me twitch will tell me you when i am live as well as you being able to see on my schedule page what time it is for your time zone that i am going to be live i twitch three days a week monday wednesday friday 3 p.m new zealand time whether it's summer or winter it's whatever's on our clocks that's 3 p.m that i stream at and very occasionally i won't be there but the rest of the time I am. So that's just a hello to the YouTube people. Now, back to the, the ranting and the rambling and everything else that goes on because this is a live chat that happens to have reading as part of it. What was I going to tell you? I told you about the power cut. I don't know if I was going anywhere else with that about the power cut. Anyway, whatever. I'm here. We don't, we don't have a power cut today. Yay! As far as I know. And I still didn't read adjust these images for the colouring here. Um, I probably should about here actually introduce myself to those who are new to what I do and being here. Um, this whole setup is slightly different to what it used to be. This is probably, what's today? Tuesday. Second or third day? Second day? using this particular sort of a layout where I don't have a frame around it, the standard frame that I used to. So we get a few weird things like this, this um, rafter up here floating in the corner of the picture, but it doesn't go right up to the outside. As you can see, it cuts off around the edges for where my camera finishes. Um, but that's, that's neither here nor there, it's just random information. 
Uh, and yeah, I've got it placed so that the image behind me is more complete. Um, I could move it over, but then you'd get light past the edge of my green screen, and so that would just be a bright patch in the corner of the screen. Oh, that's right. I was going to tell you about technical stuff, because I haven't done that that particular aspect of it for a while. If you go to my About page, one of the panels that's there, those are the little sections with heading pictures, one of the panels that's there that talks about the equipment that I use. I probably need to update it because my computer's actually better than it was when I wrote that. So I use this microphone. It is a blue snowball, not the snowball ice, which is the small version. It's basically the same size as that, but it's got a thinner bit on the base there and it doesn't pick up as well and it doesn't have quite the same number of options on the back, which there's a switch there for different um, microphone pickup shape patterns. So whether or not it picks up the same amount of sound from the back as from the front, that sort of thing, which you don't really need once you're using it all the time for the same thing, but that's just one of those extra bonuses. I like my blue snowball. It was a gift from a family member and I really really appreciate it. I also like the um, slightly quirky yet also retro look to it on the front as you see this sort of style. A little bit um, old school studio but also round. <laughs> um, and all the extra bits on this, this stuff here, is because I do not have a shock mount for it. A shock mount is what means that when this happens, uh, hang on, I'll put it somewhere where you can actually experience it. So if I go like this, you should be getting a thumping, which is in the bottom end of the sound coming through the microphone. If I pull it away from where it's touching anything like that, You don't get anywhere near as much of that because the actual sound isn't transferring up through the physical legs of the microphone into the main sound pickup. Okay, so what I've that's what a shock mount does. Uh, old school use, like old school radio shows, if you're seeing photographs of them, they will often have a ring like this, which has springs that come in and hold this microphone that's sitting in the middle. Oh, whacked myself. Um, that sort of thing. Um, modern ones, they have these cool rings that are uh, that are this shape, this way, and then they have like a spider web that goes around it that holds the microphone up. Uh, they're really cool, very nifty. I love the idea, but I'm not going to go and put uh, you know hundred dollars, hundred and fifty dollars New Zealand into something like that at this stage if I can build my own using some oversize. Um, skewers and some hair ties and the ring off the top of a can oh, and a piece of plywood. Uh, it's working perfectly fine. So let's go with that. It takes up a little bit more room on my desk but then I also don't have a microphone arm to suspend the microphone from. So that's why this works very well and also why I needed it because I don't have a microphone arm. My microphone used to sit on my desk and if I was typing it would go clunk, clunk, clunk. Not just the clatter, which you will still pick up, but also the clunk of the keys hitting the bottom of the keyboard base and the sound going through the desk and up into the microphone. So that's what that is. That's one of the technical aspects about what I do and I've talked about that one more recently than I have some of the others. The other one I was specifically going to tell you about, yes, I am going to read books sometime today. Don't worry about that. Don't panic. Don't panic, Mr. Mannering. Right, so another aspect of DIY technology is effectively what I'm doing. Um, I like being able to use things that are handy. I like being able to use things that are household goods. Maybe not stuff that I have at home, but I can get from the hardware store instead of something that is has a technical purpose label. We used to do a lot to do with boats. Anytime something has the word marine in its name, it's going to cost twice as much. Even if it's exactly the same as what you got down the road from the hardware store or the fishing shop. But because it's for boats and it says marine, it's extra expensive. Now, if you're careful, you'll find that there are some things that need that because they actually will be made differently boat purposes, it will have stainless steel instead of normal metal. Hi Arinelle, great to have you here, good to see you. Um, and 
And then on top of that, you get the same with doing streaming and recording and stuff like that. So people will sell you these really, really, really expensive lights. Very cool lights, very effective. I love them, one day I'll get them. They are not even on my wish list though, because I don't think that that's a reasonable expectation for what I'm doing. When I get nearer to having a lot more people involved with what I'm doing, when I have a lot more people who are subscribed to me and I can justify putting some money into that, yeah, I will look at getting Niwa lights or getting Elgato lights or anything like that. But in the meantime, in the meantime, what you can do, do not ever think that you are limited with being able to stream because you don't have high technology gear. For example, Aranel, who I've just said hi to in our chat, she streams using mobile dev devices. She doesn't let not having the fancy stuff stop her from streaming because people don't come to listen to you uh, to look at your fantastic technical gear. They come to listen to you and what you are talking about. If you're playing a game, they're coming, not actually, they might find you because of the game that you play. But most of the time, people who regularly come back to your stream will come back because of you, not the game you're playing. Because there's always someone who plays the game better than you. There's always someone who makes more mistakes than you that they can laugh at. All that sort of stuff. The majority of people who keep coming back and listening and interacting with you will come back because of you and the community you have built around you in your streams. So there's a guy I know who streams uh, first person shooter games. I can't play those to save myself. Literally, I cannot play those to save myself. I do not have the reactions needed for that sort of game. Uh, I don't particularly enjoy those sort of games. They're very, very noisy and I get overwhelmed by the sound. But I will often watch his streams because of the way he interacts with his community and the way his community interacts together with each other in chat. And I keep going back. And the reason I'm actually streaming is because he showed me it was doable because of the community you build around yourself. It's not about the game you play. So people will say to me, oh, well, what game do you stream when they find out that I'm a streamer? I don't, I don't stream games except for once or twice. Um, but I enjoy reading out loud and chatting with my friends, the friends that I make here while I'm streaming. They don't all have to be pre-existing friends. Anyway, so back to the technology side of it. Yes, lots of big hugs there, Aranel. I will actually um, do a shout out for you shortly, but I, I really want us to have a few more people in channel um, so that you get some value from me shouting out. Anyway, so what I was going to say about technology was I don't have the Elgato stream lights or anything like that. I'm just finding, unhooking some cables that are underneath random stuff on my desk. <laughs> um, so I can show you. Right, so instead of having something like an Elgato key light, which is the one that it lights up your face so that you can be seen, not the accent light or the hair light or the background light or any of those other things. Instead of me having one of those, I have a bedside lamp stand with this here. I'm going to turn it off so you can see it. See, it's just this round disc. I will turn it around and take it out. We use bayonet fittings by preference in New Zealand, not the screw-in ones, just because they're so much easier to work with. So this is a Philips LED UFO light because it looks like a UFO. Um, do, 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 do. I can't actually hum any of the UFO type tunes and make them sound all creepy or spooky. I'll just put this back in and then I can turn it on. So that's just a bedside lamp base. And I've just got that on top. And it, it is literally, you saw the end of it. That is a standard light fitting base in New Zealand. And I turn that on. I don't point it directly at me because it's a bit bright for that. But I have it sitting sideways so I get a bit of spill out of the side. But also because of where I am, my office space, you have to do what works for you. Right here is the ceiling. And it's angled the same as this rafter here. The ceiling sits on top of that rafter and it's painted white just because our ceilings are in our house. So that UFO light shines up onto the ceiling, which is at an angle, the same as this. Sorry, it's Quest Sprout, stand up. 
sit up. So same angle as this, and this light is here in front of me, but across at the angle, and it shines up on the white ceiling and bounces back at me. So I don't get edges, harsh shadow edges, as much as I would do. So like if I do that, you can see there's a shadow there, but you don't see the outline of my fingers or my hand, which you would get if you had a, a narrow light that was pointing directly at you. Low tech, really low tech. Um, yeah, it's not the cheapest bulb that you can get compared with a normal household bulb, but it was only like $20 or something like that. I could have got it slightly dearer if I got it from the hardware store. I happen to know people who work up at the electrical goods supply store who supply exactly the same stuff for slightly cheaper, so I got it that way. But $20 as opposed to New Zealand five or $800 for a key light, I know which one I want, thank you very much. <laughs> so, and the other one that I've got that I use as the fill light that does the extra bit around the edge, I should probably have it ever so slightly softer than my key light, just so that I get a little bit of contrast between the two. But the one that I've got there is a Philips stick bulb. I'm just wondering if I've got one handy to sh that's not plugged in to show you just a moment. I don't I thought I did otherwise I would have shown it to you but they're basically when you look at them side on they're kind of a little rectangle um, but they're actually round and that one because it's not just a round clear glass cover actually gives a little bit more broad spread on the light and that one's just in a little cheap equipoise or angle poise desk lamp which only has arms on it this long so it doesn't reach very far kind of like the tiny one in the pixar um little ads where it goes boing 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 and then jump, jumps on the eye and bounces up and down to push it down kind of like that sort of shape and very very similar proportions to that and i just have this little stick light in the lamp hood um, and so that's shining down towards me and also my desk so when you're looking at my crafting you're seeing the light from those speaking of which <laughs> crafting I'm actually not quite going to start with the crafting I'm actually going to start with putting something else together first so let's swap to another camera angle just a moment I'm moving some bits that are in the way Right, I think that'll do. Uh, yeah, let's go for it. We'll swap to this other camera. You should still be able to hear me fine. Here we go. Here I am. Hello. Uh, except that now you've got the desk, the stuff that's on the desk. That's the base of my microphone there <coughs> on my keyboard shelf. Uh, you've got that sitting behind me because of my green screen. Uh, Oh, that's straight enough that'll do it's slightly crooked actually I might just it's sitting on the end my webcam is sitting on the end of a tissue box <laughs> so I've put the tissue box this way and the webcam sitting on top um, that's my old one that I used to use as my face camera because that was the only one I had and that was another family gift from the same person who gave me the microphone right so what you see here today oh we didn't tweak those colors did we I'll just see if I can so it's a little bit clearer I didn't actually deal with it in the other app that I normally use first okay we'll go for this Hang on, cancel that move that one over there so I can actually see what I'm doing and the effect it has and we will go contrast and I'll put my hand there so I can see not quite that much something that's a little bit more realistic brightness saturation saturation is probably what we need I'm looking for something that's going to make it look a lot more like human skin color even though the stuff that's on my face and my little camera doesn't look quite so realistic that's probably about the best we're going to do but it does mean that you can see a little bit better than you did before that'll do okay so what I've got here 
So I want to put this back together again before I get reading because then I can get it out of my way. So what I've got, I'll try and get my microphone cord out of the way now. Get my little box of screwdrivers out. And the two tips I need are a very small Phillips, not the smallest, and the next one up. Those can go out of the way. It's not the most logical of boxes. Oh, yeah, and I will say hi. Okay, hang on, we'll just swap back to the other screen and say hi properly. I'm just going to say hi to everybody who's new here. Hi, I'm Jeff. I do usually read old children's books. Um, we're currently going through a series of English fairy tales, such as the cover that you see up there in the corner of the screen. They've been collected by a chap called Joseph Jacobs. Um, he just went around listening to people telling old stories that they knew that had been around for years and years and years and wrote them down. A lot of them, because they were oral tradition, had the feel of a rhyme, a poem or a song. And so some of them he left that way and other ones he rephrased them a bit into a more prose style, a story style. Uh, but he tried to keep them sounding like a spoken story, which is why some of the phrasing is a little bit different to what you'd expect. But he also uses old words just because those were the words that were being used. This one was published in 1890 and is apparently one of the ones that really set the scene for uh, English story tales. Uh, we've had Jack and the Beanstalk. We've had a whole lot of ones which have elements of things that feel familiar. I know we're going to have some other ones that actually will be stories we already know, but they may sound slightly different to what we're used to because we get used to specific retellings. Anyway, so I'm Je Jeff. I read old children's books. This is the current example. Um, other ones... I grew up reading ones that were that looked like this. This one's 100 years old. This is 125 years old. And the reason they look like that is because those are the books that were on the shelves around our house. They were handy. They were the ones I could get ac easy access to. Sorry. Just moves Quest Sprout so he's not quite so... Zzz. He's still doing it, but I don't know. Whatever. Um, so those are the books I read. And I have three tips for you. If you're new here, you won't know these tips. If you are not new here, you will know these tips. Recite it with me. Tip number one, get drinks. Tip number two, get snacks. Tip number three, get comfortable. So get drinks. I always have water handy. Uh, it's brilliant for making your brain and your body work well. And if you are doing a lot of talking, which reading involves, or chatting involves, um, it keeps your voice functioning really well. So from time to time, I will remember to have a drink. There you go. Um, and I have a treat drink today, which is sarsaparilla, also known as root beer. Uh, and my color change cup, which is not going to change color very much because the drink is too dark to show you. So that's get drinks, get snacks. What do we have in this? Normally I pull something out of my snack jar which is my treat jar, treat time, there you go, that's my QR code if you really want to tip me. But you'll only be able to do that if you're looking at it on a normal screen and you get out your phone in a hurry and do a scan of the QR code. <laughs> right, so in here I normally have treats, I have my Finnish licorice in there, This is. it looks like this big long string of it, but I'm not going to have that for a treat today, I'm saving that one. I can't always get that. It's very yummy. It's not as sweet as a lot of them are, and it's not over chewy. It's It's got a nice, it's got some resistance when you start to chew it, but then it it, it squishes down nicely. Um, I like gummy bears, but not that much because I find them too hard chewy. You have to keep, it's like you're repeating the same thing over and over again and nothing changes with gummy bears. You have to chew and chew and chew and chew before you get much flavour out of them and before they start breaking down. I like gum textured things where you actually get some result a little bit sooner. So New Zealand brand wine gums are like that. English ones not so much, they tend to go to more that soft pasty stage a bit quicker. But we have some other sweets, lollies, candy, that we have in New Zealand which are also that sort of gum base. Uh, made with gelatin that have the, the sort of texture I want and I am going to get some and show them to you instead of just pictures sometime. Next time I go to the warehouse maybe. 
which is a department store that's set up that looks a little bit like a warehouse. Called that's why it's called the warehouse. Um, it's if you are a regular Costco user where they have the the commercial racking where they've got things poked in on pallet racks, things like that, and some other places do that sort of thing. You'll know the sort of style I'm talking about. It's not fancy. Anyway, the treat I have today is New Zealand hundreds and thousands cookies. Biscuits. They're not cookies. We're not American. Sorry. We love you very much, but you got it wrong. They're not called cookies. They're biscuits. This is the ASMR part. This is the snack ASMR. It's the unpacking of the treats, which is why ASMR is a tab. <laughs> it gets you ready for some treat to eat. That sound. Okay, so these are hundreds and thousands biscuits. They're just a very, very plain biscuit on the back. Uh, if you were to get New Zealand round wines vanilla wines or super wines they are three things that are very plain but slightly different textures and flavors one of them looks very much like that but they're also very thin relatively relatively thin about five millimeters thick at the most uh, which is about quarter of an inch i think i'm not sure and then on the front they have hundreds and thousands uh, non pareils or sprinkles, but they're not the long sprinkles, they're the round sprinkles, hundreds and thousands. That's what those are, and then all embedded in pink icing. So that's today's snacks for me. And now's your opportunity to go and get your snacks if you didn't bring any, if you forgot. Erin now is trying out all of her favourite um, emotes that she's able to pull in from elsewhere because she's subbed. <laughs> I'm glad you're enjoying that. It's good. It's lovely to see them. I really want to have something that works like a hype cup, which gathers um, little icons like your like your profile picture and stuff like that. Um, when someone subscribes or follows or any of those things, gives bits. That sort of stuff. A hype cup will capture the images for that and just have them sitting there. And so it's a good, uh, it's a fun way to actually see what's going on. Um, I, I, I like the idea. I don't like the pressure to, um, to get people to put more money into it because then they can see their thing go across the screen and help fill it up. It feels a little bit too give me, give me, give me. I would like to have something like a hype cup but it would fill up with any emotes that are being used in chat as they're being used. And then maybe it could be combined with something like Capogen's emote explosions, where once it's full, it goes poo and throws them all out and you start off with a next, your next set. And I just tipped my drink on me. <laughs> this is why I have a cup that has a lid. It did spill but not as much as it would have without the lid. Excuse me while I just clean up some of this, this sticky off the floor. I have a wooden floor that's not sealed, which means that the ants are going to come because of the sticky and the wood is going to soak up that moisture. So I'm just going to put a little bit of water on it and get the sugar here. Yeah, very, oh, indeed. <laughs> I'm just going to use a little bit of water on it so that the sugar doesn't go into the wood of the floor too much. It will eventually get a proper sealing on it, seal on it, like um, varnish or polyurethane or oil or something like that. But we're, I'm, a, I'm married to a builder. It's a builder's house, so it's going to be a little while yet. Excuse me. I shall just go off screen while I do this. But as I say, I am very, very pleased. I have a lid on my drink cup. <laughs> anyway, so that was all because I was waving my hands around, talking about emote explosions from the hype cup. That would be a really cool, cool way to empty it once it's full. And then the next set of um, emotes that come through would fill it up again. And it, 
you know, if it would automatically empty itself when it needed to by going, <laughs> that would be cool. I haven't yet found somebody who's willing to do that for me, like the, the way they've done my um, dictionary. So if you, if you are unfamiliar with this, I asked on one of the streamers' um, tech pages, Discord servers, uh, if anyone knew of a dictionary app that you could add in when you're streaming, so you could actually call up a definition for a word. There is one that's around, but it's designed to only work from a particular website. Because of the focus on my stream being for a family-friendly sort of a setting where we don't worry about have to worry about language or bad things going on and stuff like that, I didn't want to be calling the definitions from the Urban Dictionary because they can get a little bit crass. So I was asking about it and explained why and somebody actually thought it was a brilliant idea. So they said take it over to this particular channel and discuss it over there and we'll see what, see what happens from there. So I did. And then two of these people who do coding started discussing it together and then occasionally asking me a question, and they came up with my dictionary app. They wrote it especially, for, well, one of them did, and then the other one gave suggestions. They wrote it especially for me. It is available for other people to use as well. I can make it, I can set it so it's only me, or me and my moderators, or anyone in my chat can actually call up a definition. It's currently set for me and my moderators, just so it doesn't get abused. Um, I'm trying to think of something I can call up a word for. Right, simple. So, biscuit, rare in the US, a small flat baked good which is either hard and crisp or else soft but firm. A cookie, that part is for the Americans. Okay, so this thing here, this little box which has the word, which is in front of my hand, it actually has pronunciation, if you know how to read pronunciation letters, it has whether it's a noun, a verb, or whatever, parts of speech. Um, and it pops up and if there is more than one definition for it such as what well, let's give you another sample cookie a small flat baked good which is either crisp or soft but firm and see it says noun over here and it has the word I was able to figure out how to do the adjustment for the font size because it was not quite clear enough before I was able to set what color I wanted they did variations there you go we've got a second definition of a cookie a verb to send a cookie to a user for computers etc so there you go that was part of the rebuild of the widget that they made for me was to be able to bring up a second or a third definition and to be able to set how long it shows on screen for, as well as the color, as well as having that background on it, because originally I had to put a background piece of stuff behind it if I ever wanted to use it. Just things like that. So that was really, really cool because I asked a question. There was nobody who had something like that, and so they actually wrote one up, and they let me know every now and then if they've done an update to it. Um, if you want something that's purely plug and play, it's not quite. You, they, you download a bunch of files, you copy the text in each file and put it into the right place in um, Stream Elements, and then it works. That's really cool. I like it. So I talk about things that I would like to be able to access for using on my stream because you never know. Sometimes people will hear you and do something about it. There you go. And I deserve a mouthful of that root beer after, after cleaning up the mess. Right. So we'll go back to the other, other page. Now, oh, no, 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 I did two. I did drinks, snacks, comfortable. Get comfortable. If you're going to listen to a story or watch someone making fun of themselves or anything like that, it's a good idea to get comfortable if you want to be there for a while. So whether it is a nice cushion, a pillow, under your head, a blanket fort, especially if it's cold where you live, slippers, um, you know, along with your nice cup of hot chocolate, you know, for drinks and your cookies for snacks. Um, whether it's your squishmallows and your other um, soft toy friends to keep you company, whatever it is, find something that's going to help you be comfortable so you can enjoy, you can listen without being distracted by being uncomfortable uncomfortable um 
that sort of stuff. That's really what that's all about. <laughs> um, I will give you some more information a bit later on if we get some more people arrive. People who I don't usually have here, just or people who I think it might be something that's worth them finding out about. Because sometimes that happens too. Um, I shall carry on back over here. I'm just looking at my other monitor in case it's something I need to have dealt with. I will put up on screen a couple of things. So, uh, <sighs> first of all, I'll just do this. So there's a couple of things that I'm putting up on screen now. The first one is my disclaimer. There you go, you can see it here. Um, this stream includes works of fiction, such as autobiographies. Any references to events, people or places, real, imaginary, past or present are used in, at the discretion of the author's memories, not my responsibility, imaginations and external sources. These works may include negative depictions, slang, terminology and mistreatment of people and cultures, which may trigger some audiences. But rather than remove or alter this content, we acknowledge its impact with reasonable and moderated conversation. Now, if you want to have conversation about something that is said in a book or a story, oh bother, I went and cleared it the whole lot rather than the thing I wanted to clear. Um, if you want to um, discuss some attitudes from the past that you may be known to agree with and you don't like the way they were mentioned, I'm probably not the right person to discuss it with. If you want to have a reasonable discussion about how you can see that things have changed, some things weren't as bad as you thought they were in the past or whatever like that, the best place to do that is over on my Discord server. So I'll give you the link for that. There you go. There's the link for my Discord server. Mm. And if you're still looking for it and you can't see it on screen because of the way you're looking at it, my Twitch About page has a link for it. And on YouTube, it's on my About there. But you have to scroll down to find that one. Um, I'm pretty sure I've got that one working these days. So that's those. Uh, I also will give you the, this disclaimer kind of thing. If you are 18, you are mo and, and older, you are most welcome to be here. If you are under 18 and over 13, you're welcome to be there here if you have an adult with you who gives you specific permission, your guardian or parent. Um, but other than that, you're not entitled to be here. Uh, and you are breaking the terms of service for Twitch if you are here on your own and you don't have that permission and you're under 18. So I do not ask you to own up to your age. If you tell me in chat or tell me privately that you are under age and do not have guardianship with you, or if you're under 13 and you let that slip in chat or to me privately, I will ban you and I will also report you to Twitch because you are refusing to comply with their terms. And it is about your safety and well-being. They do not want to get into trouble with the lawmakers for people doing something that they shouldn't be doing. Because there are some really thing, some things on Twitch which you don't really need to see or be involved with. I might not be showing them or talking about them, but I don't condone that sort of behaviour where you are flaunting the rules. Flaunting. Flaunting the rules, not flaunting. Flaunting is playing a flute. You can flaunt to your heart's content, but not on my stream. Go and set up your own stream as long as you're over 18. Right, so I don't have my chat, my stream tagged as 18 plus because I don't use bad language. Um, sometimes in stories we will have some things that come up that people these days don't agree with, which is why I had that disclaimer earlier on. It's just one of those things that happen. There's not a lot you can do about it. It's part of the story. I don't edit the stories I read. I don't go through and read ahead to find out if there's anything that needs to be... What's the word for it? Or you filter something out because you 
don't agree with it. My brain has gone weird with words. Again, words, not a good word day. Not the ones that I have to make up for myself. Um, yeah, so I don't go through and say, oh, well, this, I don't agree with this. I totally trash what they're saying and we're not going to do that. But I don't do that. Um, I don't filter all that stuff out. There are one or two actual words I don't use that will be written on a story just because of they really are quite intensely not acceptable these days. And it's easy enough to spot them and just avoid them, substitute something else. But apart from that, I just read the story as it's written. And I don't read beforehand to find out what's going to be written in the story. Uh, there was something else to do with uh, my saying everything to everybody beforehand. Um, um, say hi to Aaron L and Jonathan. Um, go and follow them on their channels. Subscribe to them. Um, Twitch will then tell you when they're live. So both of those people read on stream. Jonathan reads old Tudor documents because he's putting together a, a game that is based in what was actually happening during the Tudor period in English history and British history, not English. Um, and Aranel reads choose your own romance, adventure stories, manga things and cartoons and and other things, all sorts of stuff. I'm not good with words for those, sorry. I should have just read my little description there. She reads romantic and choose your own stories, games casually, and more. So Jonathan also games as well. Not everybody just reads. Like, I don't really just read anymore. I basically do just chatting and then chuck some reading in there. It's not the intention, but we'll get there with the story in a minute. But what I want to do is go back to my other screen and put this gadget back together so that it's out of the way, because if I don't put it together today, I'm going to lose the bits, and I might as well just throw it away. So what it is, is one of those mug warmers. It's not a particularly good one, it was cheap, um, but I pulled it apart to see how it worked. I didn't actually take the circuitry apart, so it should be okay, but we'll see how it goes, and then and you can see my, my workspace. So here we go, we're back here again. Um... I'll just get the cord out of the way. This is the base, and it's, of course, silver colored. I'll get some of the muck out of the bottom of it. Actually, I've got a giant paintbrush here that I use for dusting things. I'm not going to dust it over my desk. I'll dust it over here nearer to the bin just to get the muck out of it. Did you enjoy that loud bang in your ear when I hit the microphone stand? I thought so. I've got to remember which way around that went. <laughs> this is the top. This is the bit. You should be able to see yourself in there in a minute. If I point it at the right place. There's one camera. And the other camera is up there somewhere. Doesn't matter. So that the back of that is the metal plate which sits on the heating pads. I'm going to turn it around a quarter of a turn and sit it back in place so that the little heating elements, oh no, they're not exactly the same. I thought they were. Let's see if I can turn it a half turn then and see if it fits. No, I have to put it back the, back the way it was, if I can find it. Yep, it's back the way it was. Right, so that stuff there is, that, white-ish, creamish stuff there, is probably meant to, to help it to not melt the plastic bits that the heating elements are sitting on. That's these here. And let me tell you now, they have been melted. There they are. Let's see if I can get it a bit clearer. They have been melted. That brown around the edge. That's it. So I'm going to put this in here, which goes this way. That goes there, that goes there, I think. Oh, yeah, and I've got the little lights on this end, the indicator lights that I have to line up. That's what's in the way. I'm glad I've got a limiter on my microphone, otherwise I'd be blasting your ears out since I'm leaning so close to it. So over here, I've got my little screws. I've got some small ones and some big ones. Cat just walked past. But he's gone down to the other end of this space. Sorry. 
something distracting me, a bit of fluff on my shoulder. So what I'll do is I'll put in the small screwdriver bit. Unfortunately, this camera I can't zoom with unless I just literally change the size of the image in my overlay. So once these are back on here, <laughs> magnetic tips. <laughs> Once the this um, is screwed back on, then I can make it fit properly into the other half. It shouldn't be a problem because they're just slapped together in a factory, or they were five, ten years ago. This one's an old one, actually. Back in the days when we just had standard USB. Hello, how are you? wish I could show you to the others. He's a lovely cat. So if you saw my Instagram post that I was going to be going live today soon-ish, then you will have seen two pictures of Mr. Theodore. That's who I'm saying hello to. He's gorgeous. He's probably Maine Coon or possibly um, Norwegian Forest Cat. Um, but he and his whole litter were abandoned on a city street down in the city, down in Auckland, and were picked up by the SPCA, which is kind of like the RSPCA, but it's the New Zealand one, so it's the SPCA. This goes, oh, that's where the power goes, this one goes here, and sits I didn't realize that this this one actually had a in there I can pry I can that that one I can use an, an external power source instead of having to use the USB one didn't know that well I probably did at the time when I got it and in here under where the feet are meant to go is where we put in the other screws and then I can carry on with whatever it is I'm meant to be doing today which is reading a story and then maybe making an actual something. One of the things I did today, you'll be pleased to know, is I actually reprinted the Hello Kitty picture. And I printed it onto some light cardboard. Which means that it's going to be better for making it stand up on a headband as just kitty ears with a bow which I will do a decoration for, for the bow. What I'd love to do for a decoration is just really, really thickly um, put a really thick coating of a nice, intense, strong, but not orangey, more of a bluey red glitter, where you get so much of it on that it just sort of like, it's all sparkle. I think that would work really well. Either that or do a fabric one, but I don't know. And just fill up that whole area so deeply with um, glitter that it is very obvious what that it's that kitty bow. We'll get there. Right, and that is all back together. And it's only got its little slight rattle from the pins where I put it together. Um, see if the little feet will still stick in. I don't know if they will because I'm pretty sure that the, whoops, that's the sticky side, I think. Yep, that's the sticky side. It's sticking to my finger. It's just a little bit of, a little tiny disc of foam with self-adhesive on one side. And this one, I think the adhesive is totally given up. Yep, I'll shove it in the hole. So that one's out of the way. And it's still on my desk and it should still work because there's nothing weird that I did to it. Come back over here and I'll carry on eating my hundreds and thousands biscuits and put away the screwdriver tips. And the screwdriver. And I can shut that, and I don't need to have that in my way again. Get the muck off the screen. Not the screen, the um, cutting mat. 
and put that back where it belongs. Oh, you would have, I don't know if you saw that in the side. So I'll go, just go back to the shot again for a minute. Over here. This is the Hello Kitty picture that I had last time, and it's just on paper, which is a bit of a pain. Whereas this is cardboard, which is, this is 80 GSM paper, 80 grams per square meter. This is 160 GSM, which means it's light card. So that one will stand up more easily on its own than this one. If I hold it like this, you'll see. Let's hold it this way. See, that one's quite floppy. This one's quite strong. So I'll be able to do that, cut that out, and put it on that one of those stand-up headbands. So how about we go back over to here and we do some actual reading? That's not a bad idea, is it? Um, just get my keyboard rearranged so I can get my reading stand over here. So I can read from it. Mouse, yes, in the right place. I really wish I could show you the cat. But if I tried picking up my webcam to show you, let's spend all of the rest of the streaming session <laughs> trying to. <laughs> let's read books, says Aranel. Aranel's ready to go, raring to go. I'll just move this over here. That's a better location for it. Okay, let's read. And don't forget, I've also got those redemptions on ears. Um, if coleslaw arrives, please make sure that I know that coleslaw's here because there's a redemption that, that she put through just before the end yesterday that I didn't see. And aranel has gone and redeemed the ears. So, okay, we will do that one. But if if you see coleslaw, make sure I know because I need to do the redemption that she she um, initiated last time, which I didn't quite see because it's right at the end of the stream. Mm -hmm. The first thing I need to do is come over here and find my picker. Turn it on. My brain has gone, oh yeah, right. I have to do the interact thing. <laughs> Make that a bit bigger so it fits. And we go spin. What are we going to get today? What is it? 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 Unicorn! We haven't had this one before. This is the proper unicorn one. Thank you, Aranel. That's lovely. Here we go. The Ar the the Aranel that I've got in here. No, I don't have an Aranel in here. The unicorn one is. I'll dig through the box until I find it. This one. They're kind of like all tangled up now. I think I might need a bigger box. This one. And I can put the other ones, which I didn't put away last time there's too much going on back in the box and we'll pull up the egg timer there you go oh I'm gonna have to move my picture down aren't I except that it's not gonna get that okay I'll just have to sit down like this there you go so you can see it it must have a little bit of green right up on the top yes it's got a little bit of green on the very er, on the very top of my um of the horn there it's got a little bit of green in the shine there which is why it's disappearing <laughs> cute and I like this is lace and these are little fabric um, flowers as well as the rainbow color here I really like this one and it was just from our warehouse shop along the road um, I like the fact that I can get some cute stuff there and it's not really expensive now I need to pull up the egg timer Come on, where are you, egg timer? Turn you off and turn you on again. I'm pretty sure I've got the egg timer here. Why is that not showing? Okay, we'll turn off the picker. Oh, that, that will be why. It's behind the other thing. And we'll start it. Here we go. That's going to run for six minutes. I will wear this for six minutes and then we'll carry on um, without it. I'm getting the crumbs off the front of myself. 
You can see I'm in my traditional uniform of black t-shirt. I realise I probably don't wear it as much on stream as I do in real life, but I wear black t-shirts all the time. They're comfortable. I don't have to make decisions about fancy stuff. Anyway, right, so today's story, we are going to read, I'll try, actually try getting my microphone a little bit closer, but still keep it so that the, the um, unicorn horn is still within sight. I am reading the story of the three little pigs from English fairy tales collected by Joseph Jacobs. So here we go. The story of the three little pigs. Once upon a time when pigs spoke rhyme and monkeys chewed tobacco and hens took snuff to make them tough and ducks went quack, quack, quacko. <laughs> and I have no idea what that came from, but he's got that as the intro to the story. Probably the way somebody else was telling the story at the time. You never know with this chap. There was an old sow with three little pigs, and as she had not enough to keep them, she sent them out to seek their fortune. The first that went off met a man with a bundle of straw and said to him, Please, man, give me that straw to build me a house, which the man did. I don't know why he didn't ask for payment, but, oh, oh, and I've just realised, so sorry. Um, there you go. You can ha actually talk now. I forgot to turn on the chat properly. So aranel has been talking to me by putting in all these pictures and I didn't have a clue. <sighs> there you go. You can actually talk now. <laughs> Thank you, Jonathan. <laughs> I'm sorry I didn't see that before. Um, I must have one too many tabs open because my browser's not quite big enough to show that part of it. Um, how many messages I've got sitting waiting for me. <laughs> but we'll get there. Right. <laughs> Sorry, Aranel, I just didn't, I'm, sometimes I'm just so thick. I didn't realise you were putting all those emotes up there and I just didn't have a clue. Oh, well, we get there. <laughs> yes, you're no longer imprisoned, Jonathan. Well done. <laughs> right. So the little pig said to the man, please, man, give me that straw to build me a house, which the man did. And the little pig built a house with it. Presently, along came a wolf. I think wolves were a lot more common than what we think than what we imagine in Europe and in England. They are coming back again too. Did you know that? <sighs> Hopefully they will stay away from the main urban places and the smaller urban places and the little villages and the farmhouses. Mm. Presently along came a wolf and knocked at the door and said, "Little pig, little pig, let me come in." To which the pig answered, No, no, by the hair of my chinny chin chin. The wolf then answered to that, and you will all know this story. So I'm free to play around with the intonations and stuff, okay? The wolf then answered to that, Then I'll huff, and I'll puff, and I'll blow your house in. So he huffed, and he puffed, and he blew his house in, and he ate up the little pig. Not like the Disney one. The second little pig met a man with a bundle of furs and said, Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, let's find out what furs is. No, 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 I need to type word. There you go. Furs, a thorny evergreen shrub with yellow flowers. Ulex genus, ex and etc. species of which Ulex europaeus is particularly common upon the plains and hills of Great Britain and Ireland. Furs, also known as the Whins, W H I N N S, if you're in Ireland, Northern Ireland, or Gorse, Gorse, the Furs or the Whins. Um, the twigginess of it when it dries out can be used for things. And also the spikiness of it when it's not dried out can be used kind of as a little bit of a barrier in some ways because um, soft-skinned anim creatures, animals of certain sorts, don't really want to push through it because it's very, very, very uncomfortable to get through. Right, so. <laughs> well, carry on. Gorse it is, that's the one. Jonathan's the one with the... Um, Horticulture background. <clears throat> Did you know about those other names for it? Apart from me talking about it before, because I know I have, um, that it's also furs and whins. Uh, 
I'm trying to think. I'm pretty sure I knew because of traveling and living over in England and Ireland. Whins I learnt when we were in Ireland. But I think it's also called Whins in parts of Scotland. Anyway. Please give me that furs to build a house, said the pig, which the man did, and the pig built his house. Then along came the wolf and said, Little pig, little pig, let me come in. No, no, by the hair of my chinny chin chin. Then I'll puff and I'll huff and I'll blow your house in. So he huffed and he puffed and he puffed and he huffed and at last he blew the house down and he ate up the little pig. Then the third little pig met a man with a load of bricks and said to him, Please, man, give me those bricks to build a house with. I really don't know how they got away with not having any money for these things. And there's the timer, so I get to take this off now. And if you want more of the ears, the headbands, you have to redeem them. There you go. Right, Jonathan says, nope, only heard of gorse and the species and genus name. Thanks, it's fascinating. Oh, I always find these things interesting. And because I find them interesting, I end up taking in the information and keeping it in my head, floating around, um, and not realizing that other people don't necessarily know. So when I do think, oh, maybe people don't know, it's, it's a nice thing to be able to share it. I like being able to just sort of give away the information. <laughs> so next part so he got given the bricks like bricks take a lot of time and money to make well time and effort if you're making them yourself or money to buy them and he was given them I don't know so the man gave him the bricks and he built his house with them so the wolf came as he did to the other little pigs and said little pig little pig let me come in No, no, by the hair of my chinny chin chin, said the little pig. Then I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll blow your house in. But he huffed and he puffed and he huffed and he puffed and he puffed and he huffed. But he could not get the house down. When he found that he could not, with all his huffing and puffing, blow the house down, he said, little pig, I know where there is a nice field of turnips. Where? said the little pig. Oh, in Mr. Smith's home field, and if you will be ready tomorrow morning, I will call for you and we will go together and get some for dinner. Hmm. I suppose the fact that the pigs had been given stuff without having to pay for it meant that they were possibly a little more trusting than they otherwise would have been. I can sit up again. I just realised. Sorry. Um... Very well, said the little pig. Oh, no, no, no. If you are will be ready tomorrow, I will call for you and we will go together and get some for dinner. Very well, said the little pig. I will be ready. What time do you mean to go? Oh, it's six o'clock, said the wolf. Well, the little pig got up at five and got to the turnips before the wolf came, which he did about six, and who said, Little pig, are you ready? The little pig said, Ready? I've been and come back again and got a nice pot full for dinner. The wolf felt very angry at this, but thought that he would be up to the little pig somehow or other. In other words, be able to outsmart him. So he said, Little pig, I know there were I know where there is a nice apple tree. Where? said the pig. Down at Merry Garden, replied the wolf, and if you will not deceive me, I will come for you at five o'clock tomorrow and get some apples. Well, the little pig bustled up the next morning at four o'clock and went off for the apples, hoping to get back before the wolf came. But he had further to go and had to climb the tree so that just as he was coming down from it, he saw the wolf coming, which, as you may suppose, frightened him very much. When the wolf came up, he said, Little pig, what? Are you here before me? Are they, are they nice apples? Hi, Blue, great to have you here. Yes, very, said the little pig. I will throw you down one. And he threw it so far that, the wolf, that while the wolf was gone to pick it up, the little pig jumped down and ran home. The next day the wolf came again and said to the little pig, Little pig, there is a fair at Shanklin this afternoon. Will you go? Oh yes, said the pig. I will go. What time shall you be ready? At three, said the wolf. 
So the little pig went off before the time as usual and got to the fair and bought a butter churn, which he was going to come going home with, when he saw the wolf coming. Then he could not tell what to do, so he got into the churn to hide. And by doing so, turned it round, and it rolled down the hill with the pig in it. Which frightened the wolf so much, he ran home without going to the fair. He went to the little pig's house and told him how frightened he had been by a great round thing which came down the hill past him. Then the little pig said, Ha! I frightened you. I had been to the fair and bought a butter churn, and when I saw you I got into it and rolled down the hill. Then the wolf was very angry indeed and declared he would eat up the little pig and that he would get down the chimney after him. When the little pig saw what he was about, he hung on, he hung on the pot full of water. He got the pot full of water and hung it on the chain over the fire and made up a blazing fire. I'm just explaining the weird phrasing he uses. Um, and made up a blazing fire and just as the wolf was coming down, took off the cover and in fell the wolf. So the little pig put on the cover again in an instant, boiled him up and ate him for supper and lived happily ever afterwards. There you go. I would say the previous two were kind of like not the brightest little pigs. So I'm imagining, I don't know about you, but I've always imagined when he talks about um, he hung on the pot full of water. What I think is that it was one of those pot cranes, I think they call it. see if I can find you a good illustration of one and show you a picture because I like showing pictures uh, which is one that's a nice clear one no that one's cobbled together from lots of other pieces I'm trying to find one that's clear about how it works. Ish. This will do. Right, save that one. Sorry, there's a whole lot of pictures, but they're not necessarily as good as I would like. Uh, not that folder. Find the right one. And then I can pull it up for you. And I haven't put up any jigsaw puzzles for you either, have I? I should. Save this one and then I can show it to you in use. The same sort of thing. Right, here we go. Find the illustration and show you. Find the right folder. And then we shall have the picture. I thought I saved that there. Maybe I saved that in the folder above. Yes, I did. I was going to save it into another one. Cold here, trying to stay warm. Make sure you've got a nice blanket or something that you can wrap up in, if possible. I hope. Sorry, I shouldn't be telling you what to do. So this is a pot crane. And what they've done here is they've actually shown you a real pot crane, but they've gone and put it in front of another pic an actual picture. So therefore what you're seeing is the shadow around the edges. So it's got, that's a hinge point there. There's another one down at the bottom. And then it has a stick, a stick that comes out this way with a hook on it. Sometimes you'll have a chain on the hook. Sometimes you'll actually have the handle of the pot and you hang your pot on it. And you go from having it pointing out that way where you can reach it without getting scorched by the fire and you push it around so it turns 
in and over the fire. So the way you would do that is by using it like this. And here's one that is, oh, <laughs> I was wondering why I couldn't see it. It's because it's behind me. There's one over there. I really need to get rid of those lights. Just a moment. The spottiness is, is irritating. I like them I'm going to figure out how to do them so that they can be used but they're distracting from everything else we're trying to do so over here there's the, the hinge at the bottom and the hinge at the top and there is where it's been turned around and it's got a pot hanging over the fire to cook and so what the, the little pig had done is he'd filled up a great big stew pot um, he would probably had one for doing all sorts of things with filled it up hung it on the hook had it it probably already had it fairly hot anyway otherwise it wouldn't have worked would it it would have just been cold water shoved that across the fire so it's sitting underneath the chimney it's in the fireplace and so the pot is underneath the chimney took the lid off woof scorch lid on woof stew for dinner there you go <laughs> not what i would have thought of doing for dinner not what i'm going to be having for dinner tonight which i don't i think i'm going to be having dumpling soup Again, I had that last night. We made it up with fr some frozen dumplings and some stock mix, beef stock mix, which was very yum. Um, it's just one of those things. <laughs> right. So, next story, hey? Let's do it. Let's see how many pages it is first before I make a decision. So five pages. We can cope with that. We can do that. We, yeah, it's doable, definitely doable. This is, a, by the way, that image in the background there is a whole stack of firewood that I found a, a, um, a free stock photo of and then made it so it wasn't quite so dominant. But I liked the texture of the ends of the firewood in the stack. So that's why you've got that behind me. Right. We are reading English fairy tales collected by Joseph Jacobs. This co cover here is the book. One of the covers it was it, it, um, produced with was, was published first in 1890. And this chapter is called The Master and His Pupil. I don't know if it's a fairy tale I know at all. So we'll read it and find out. There was once a very learned man in the North Country who knew all the languages under the sun and who was acquainted with all the mysteries of creation. Okay. He had one big book bound in black calf. That's calf skin, like a type of leather, but it's extra fine. And clasped with iron and with iron corners and chained to a table which was made fast to the floor. And when he read out of this book, he unlocked it with an iron key and none but he read from it. So the actual cover is locked shut. Let's see if I can find you a picture of a, um, a chained book. That is something I am, I haven't directly seen, but I've, oh, I actually know I have in some historic places. Mm. Let's see if I can find one that's actually more accurate. Most of them are like people are doing graphics and trying to make them seem interesting. That's not actually what we're after here. But they used to chain books to shelves so that they could not be stolen. Okay, this one will kind of help us, this image. So we'll save this one. Make sure we save it to the right folder this time. And find the illustrations. Here. And this will help us to understand what he's talking about in this story. Just need to make that a little bit smaller so we can see it. Right. Whoop, wrong side. I'm still not used to that, am I? That one and that one. There you go. So these are chained books. See, there's a chain there that goes from the cover up to this one. In this case, it's to a bar where the, where the reading shelf is. Um, and then they've got clasps here. So this chap had a lock 
on a clasp like down here and then he also had the book chained to his table and then his table was bolted to the floor so nobody could steal it what's in this book that he has to chain it up how dangerous are, are the contents anyone who's read um, Terry Pratchett's book I think it's the color of magic or the sequel to that one might be getting a little bit of a vibe off this idea the whole idea of having to chain up the books was hmm, interesting initially I think it was really just to stop people stealing them because books were handmade hand lettered not just printing press this is long before the days of printing press and so therefore they were incredibly valuable and often there would be a, a church or a political organization or a, a, an important person who just wanted to own it and so they would deviously find a way to steal it so uh, sometimes books were chained so we'll find out what he's doing about this here we go when he read out of this book he unlocked it with an iron key and none but he read from it for it contained all the secrets of the spiritual world it told him how many angels there were in heaven not that that's going to make much difference to how you live your life but okay and how they marched in their ranks and sang in their choirs and what were their several functions and what was the name of each great angel of might and it told of the demons how many of them there were and what were their several powers and their labors and their names and how they might be summoned <sighs> dangerous and how tasks might be imposed on them and how they might be changed to be as slaves to man Ooh, now I'm understanding why he keeps it locked. Not that I'm really into that sort of thing, but in, with that mindset, yeah. Now the master had a pupil who was but a foolish lad, and he acted as servant to the great master, but never was he suffered to look into the black book. Suffered in this context is allowed to. Uh, we don't use suffer in the same way that they used to, and I'm not going to pull it up because I have to wait too long for all the different definitions. Never was he suffered to look into the black book, hardly to enter his private room. One day the master was out, and then the lad, as curious as could be, hurried to the chamber where his master kept his wondrous apparatus for changing copper into gold, so he's an alchemist, and lead into silver. And where, his, where was his mirror in which he could see all that was passing in the world? <sighs> And where was the shell which, when held to the ear, whispered all the words that were being spoken by anyone the master desired to know about? <gasps> Sounds like this is a real wizard or a magician to me. The lad tried in vain with the crucibles to turn copper and lead into gold and silver he looked long and vainly into the mirror smoke and clouds passed over it but he saw nothing plain and the shell to his ear produced only indistinct murmurings like the breaking of distant seas on an unknown shore i can do nothing he said as i don't know the right words to utter and they are locked up in yon book he looked round and see the book was unfastened <gasps> The master had forgotten to lock it before he went out. Oh dear. The boy rushed to it and unclosed the volume. It was written with red and black ink. Much of it he could not understand, but he put his finger on a line and spelled it through. At once the room was darkened and the house trembled. A clap of thunder rolled through the passage and the old room, and there stood before him a horrible, horrible form breathing fire and with eyes like burning lamps it was the demon beelzebub whom he had called upon to serve him <gasps> set me a task said he with a voice like the roaring of an iron furnace which i can't do so you've got that voice the boy only trembled and his hair stood up on end set me a task or i shall strangle thee but the lad could not speak then the evil spirit stepped towards him and putting forth his hands touched his throat the fingers burned his flesh so he's reaching out and touching the boy's throat the fingers burned his flesh set me a task water yon flower 
said the boy in despair, pointing to a geranium which stood in a pot on the floor. Instantly, the spirit left the room. But in another instant, he returned with a barrel on his back and poured its contents over the flower. And again and again, he went and came and poured more and more water till the floor of the room was ankle deep. Enough! Enough! gasped the lad, but the demon heeded him not. The lad did not know the words by which to send him away. And still he fetched water. Is this reminding any of you of a particular Disney story? It rose to the boy's knees and still more water was poured. Do they not have doors in these houses so that the water can run out the doorway? When do you climb up and over a set of steps to get into a room? And then down, like the floor of the ho the room is like a swimming pool. How does this happen? Sorry, I'll carry, I'll, I'll carry on with the story. It just doesn't make sense to me, these sort of things, sometimes. It rose to the boy's knees and still more water was poured. It mounted to his waist and Beelzebub kept on bringing barrels full. It rose to his armpits and he scrambled to the tabletop. And now the water in the room stood up to the window and washed against the glass and swirled around his feet on the table. It still rose, it reached his breast, in vain he cried, the evil spirit would not be dismissed. <laughs> and to this day, he would have been pouring water and would have drowned all Yorkshire. But the master remembered on his journey that he had not locked his book and therefore returned. And at that moment, when the water was bubbling about the pupil's chin, rushed into the room and spoke the words which cast Beelzebub back into his fiery home. The end of the story. <laughs> that one is just, yeah, okay, so go on. Tell me which one you think it is. Which story does that remind you of? I, I think it was probably this or another one that's the same sort of basis was the origin of the Disney story, the Disney animation. Who conjured up something which produced lots and lots and lots of water? <laughs> Good, I'm glad you, you've got a cup of tea there, Blue. That's great. Yeah, scary dear voice. <laughs> I'm not doing pirates today, am I? I'm not meant to be doing pirates today. Um, yeah, the magician's apprentice, the sorcerer's apprentice. Uh, it was probably called the magician's apprentice in uh, in America. We call it the sorcerer's apprentice in in New Zealand and in England because a sorcerer is that sort of magician. To us, a magician just sounds a little bit like the guy who entertains kids at a birthday party, whereas a sorcerer sounds really, really serious and dangerous. Um, that sort of idea. Anyway, yeah, absolutely. Mickey Mouse. Uh, in, the, in the story, in the cartoon story, the actual images used are based, I think, on the idea of this sort of thing. It's probably a common idea in fairy tales. But it was actually drawn to do pictures for the piece of music that backed it. It was like it was a, somebody said, oh, this sounds, I'm seeing these pictures in my head when I'm thinking of this music. I'll just see if it actually says anything about that. See if I can get it. No, I don't want the modern version. I don't know, I can't find it. But it's definitely based on a particular piece of music. Uh, magician is all round magic and sorcerers seem more refined to specialised magic, but I could be wrong. Yeah, that's kind of the feel as part of it for me. Um, additionally, the bit that I was saying about at kids' parties is just because of having lived there and it's kind of diluted the whole what it's about. Um, and in England, it's partly because of the idea of 
Fantasia. Walt Disney's Fantasia is where that's from. Um, the actual movie, I think, was called Fantasia. Um, so in England, they had a long tradition of having magicians as entertainers, kind of like you have musical shows where you have music, you have song and dance, you have someone reciting things, all sorts of stuff like that. Well, a magician was also the sort of thing, like you get with the, the famous ones, even now, especially in places like Las Vegas, as a stage show. And then because there were people who had been learning all these different tricks, they would be... Um, they would, you know, you get a whole lot of people who've got skills and they want a little bit of money, they want to do something which they can use. Um, and so what they would do is they would then hire themselves out as a child's, a children's entertainer. That's what that was about. That part of it. Sorry, I'm just scrolling through IMDb to see what it says about the music in it. Come on, I clicked there, you're not doing anything. Okay, so in Fantasia, there's a whole lot of pieces of classical music, because that's what they did. They did this animation to show off all the animation skills, but also to visualize the sound of the music that, that they actually using. And they were proper fully, the Philadelphia Orchestra was the one that played for it, as far as I know, for most of it. Um, so you've got Toccata and Fugue in D minor by J.S. Bach. You've got Nutcracker Suite um, by Tchaikovsky. You've got The Sorcerer's Apprentice, there you go, which is composed by a chap called Paul Dukas and was partially reorchestrated by the orchestral director, which was a big part of it. Um, so a basic clown, just kidding, just kidding. Yeah, kind of. Yeah, used as a, as a as straight-out entertainer. Um Generally in England, they wouldn't have a clown come and entertain. You would actually have a magician, rather, as being the entertainment. So it doesn't have quite the same clown weird vibe to it. But, you know, if you've been to one children's birthday in England where they have a magician, you've been to just about any of them. They all do balloon animals. They pull, not rabbits out of hats, well, sometimes they will, especially if it's a little girl's birthday party and she's getting a rabbit for her birthday, that will be how it will be given to her. Um, but pulling a bunch of flowers or a whole lot of scarves or something out of a sleeve or a hat or anything else like that. Um, so you've got a whole lot of other pieces of music that were there. Night at Bald Mountain, I knew that was in there somewhere. Definitely. Night at Bald Mountain. And I can't remember the actual piece at the moment, but I know it's in there. Um, so one of the comments about that particular movie, because it really was, it wasn't about telling a known story, it was about illustrating the sounds, the movements of the music, was why they did it, as far as I can tell. The unusual and very creative classic of animation combines a very interesting idea with quite a bit of imagination, as well as visual effects that hold up quite well. So there you go. Um, all but a couple of the sequences are quite enjoyable, so obviously there's a couple in there that aren't quite so enjoyable, maybe a little bit creepy for little kids and that sort of stuff. I, I can never remember some the title of some things. Other things, never forget. It's just that way. That's what life seems to do. Uh, so uh, it's 25 to 5 here in New Zealand. I'm just having a look to see how many pages. If I should start cutting out those ears, yeah, I think we'll do that. Um, no, I'll read one more, and then I'll do that. So it's only another five pages, which is about the same as the last one. It's I'm finding it really interesting reading these old stories and having things like these memories of Fantasia with the, the Sorcerer's Apprentice section of the story, um, giving me these, I'm getting these memories from things like that while I'm reading a story which I know I haven't heard this particular version of the story. Just because of the way it's told, I have the sort of memory that would give me a lot more of those details if if it was something I'd heard this particular version of. So this one is called Titty Mouse and Tatty Mouse. So there you go. Titty Mouse and Tatty Mouse both lived in a house. 
Oh, this is a rhyming one. With rhythm. Titty Mouse went a-leasing and Tatty Mouse went a-leasing. So they both went a-leasing. Titty Mouse leased an ear of corn and Tatty Mouse leased an ear of corn. So they both leased an ear of corn. That's where you, like you're renting something, but for a set term usually. Titty Mouse made a pudding and Tatty Mouse made a pudding, so they both made a pudding. And Tatty Mouse put her pudding into the pot to boil. Oh, she's first. But when Titty went to put hers in, the pot tumbled over and scolded her to death. Ah! Then Tatty sat down and wept. Then a three-legged stool said, Tatty, why do you weep? Titty's dead, said Tatty, and so I weep. Then said the stool, I'll hop. So the stool hopped. Yes, sad. Then a broom in the corner of the room said, Stool, why do you hop? Oh, said the stool, Titty's dead and Tatty weeps and so I hop. Then said the broom, I'll sweep. So the broom began to sweep. Then said the door, Broom, why do you sweep? It's like then deaf until their own turn. Why do you sweep? Oh, said the broom, Titty's dead and Tatty weeps and the stool hops and so I sweep. Then, said the door, I'll jar. So the door jarred. I think in this context that means kind of like swinging. Swinging. <coughs> door. Then, said the window, door, why do you jar? Oh, said the door, titty's dead and tatty weeps and the stool hops and the broom sweeps and so I jar. Then, said the window, I'll creak. So the window creaked. That's more of a... And when you're moving it... Moving the window. Then said the window, I'll creak. So the window creaked. Now then, there was an old form outside. A form. I think it's like a bench seat. I'm not sure. We'll see how, how, what, how it reacts. Now there was an old form outside the house, and when the window creaked, the form said, Window, why do you creak? Oh, said the window, Titty's dead and Tatty weeps, and the stool hops and the broom sweeps, the, doors, the door jars, and so I creak. Then, said the old form, I'll run round the house. Then the old form ran round the house. I'm thinking the form is probably a little bit like a saw stall or a saw horse, where often it will sit outside and people will lean on it or sit on it, but it's actually used for when you hold a piece of wood in place and then you cut to keep it so you're not cutting down onto ground level, you're up at a, a height that you can work at. That may be what it is, or like one of those long stools, but used in the same way. Um, then said the old form, I'll run around the house, and then the old form ran around the house. Now there was a fine large walnut tree growing by the cottage. And the tree said to the form, Form, why do you run round the house? Oh, said the form, Titty's dead and Tatty weeps and the stool hops and the broom sweeps, the door jars and the window creaks and so I run round the house. Then, said the walnut tree, I'll shed my leaves. And so the walnut tree shed all its beautiful green leaves. Now, there was a little bird perched on one of the boughs of the tree and when all the leaves fell it said walnut tree why do you shed your leaves oh said the tree titty's dead and tatty weeps the stool hops and the broom sweeps the door jars and the window creaks the old form runs round the house so i shed my leaves then said the little bird i'll molt all my feathers so he molted all his pretty feathers now, there was a little girl walking below, carrying a jug of milk for her brothers and sisters' supper, and when she saw the poor little bird molt all its feathers, she said, Little bird, why do you molt all your feathers? Oh, said the little bird, Titty's dead and Tatty weeps, the stool hops and the broom sweeps, the door jars and the window creaks, the old form runs round the house, the walnut tree sheds its leaves, and so I molt all my feathers. Then said the little girl, I'll spill the milk. So she dropped the pitcher and spilt the milk. Now there was an old man just by on the top of a ladder, thatching a rick. Rick. Hay rick, hay stack. And you thatch them. You stack the hay round and round in circles or squares, depending on the country. And, and where the stems cross, 
it pushes it up higher and higher so you get the shape and then you actually thatch the top of it to form a roof that will not let the water in through the center at the top so that it stays edible for your animals through winter. So he's thatching a rick. Now there was an old man just by on the top of a ladder thatching a rick and when he saw the little girl spill the milk he said little girl what do you mean by spilling the milk your little brothers and sisters must go without their supper then said the little girl titty's dead and tatty weeps the stool hops and the broom sweeps the door jars and the window creaks the old form runs round the house the walnut tree sheds all it all its leaves the little girl the little bird molts all its feathers and so i spill the milk Oh, said the old man, then I'll tumble off the ladder and break my neck. So he tumbled off the ladder and broke his neck. And when the old man broke his neck, the great walnut tree fell down with a crash and upset the old form and house and the house falling, knocked the window out and the window knocked the door down and the door upset the broom and the broom upset the stool and poor little tatty mouse was buried beneath the ruins. The end. I don't think there's a moral to that story. <laughs> I think it's just one of those weird stories, as I've said, that this book seems to be full of. So that's the end of the reading part of today, but I will have a go at cutting out these ears. Oops. So I'll have a go. Get that out of the way. The book stand takes up too much room what I'm doing. A little bit sad, but also rather strange. <laughs> Did you know that we have cat facts? We also have dog facts. And there's another one too. I should find out what it's called. And they're random. Seriously, they are random. And I don't think they cost anything to use. Um, chat commands. I'm just looking to see what the last one is. Because I know there is another one that I set up. Cat, dog. Uh, I know it's here. I know it's here because I know I wrote it in here. I've got also I've got a weather forecast. You can type in exclamation mark forecast and then the name of a, t a city. Don't know about a town, but you can give it a try. Advice. Of course, it's at the top of the list. Advice. And it will be random. Totally random. I have no idea what sort of things. Random. There's probably a, like five seconds between when you do it and when you can do it again. But it's probably 15 seconds between people. When, they, when others are doing it. Like if you do it, then somebody else can do it. No. It's 15 seconds between when you do it and when you can do it again. But it's five seconds between you and somebody else doing it. That's what it is. I'm going to try it first with the paper one. Oops, I need to change my, which screen I'm on. Here we go. I'm going to try it first with the paper one before I do the card one. Now, the idea is that it will have a headband behind it kind of like this shape because it's going to go on my head it will be like that shape but I'm going to move this one out of the way and grab one of the other ones that stands upright so we can see how the shape works so the letters here will be stuck behind the picture to give us the shape does that make sense and if I go like this I need to see if I can it's about that wide okay so it will be about when it's on my head it's about that wide so that's the sort of curve we need behind it and we need to cover up those letters 
So, kind of like that. What do you reckon? About right? Let's see if I can put a, a, a line on here that will work as a guide. <laughs> My pencil was getting too short, so I pulled apart a pen that the ink had run out of. That's the end that the no it normally is. And I realized instead of breaking it, all I need to do is take the other end off it. And then the pencil was too thin, but I stuck some paper around it and shoved it into the hole and it worked. So that works for making it so I can carry on using my pencil. I love, um, Squibble has pencils that she uses a lot. And so therefore she um, goes, sharpens them a lot and ends up with really, really short ones, but she wants to use them as long as possible rather than throw them away when they get too short to use. So what she's done is she's got an artist's one of those things. They, they make proper ones for artists. And um, so what she's done is she's actually, just cut the extra paper off. She's got, it's, it's like a metal tube which has a ring around it and so you shove your pencil into the end of the metal tube and then you bring the ring down and tighten it and tighten it because they don't all have the same shape, the same size. So let's cut this around here. I hadn't realized it was going to actually be big enough to still show the whiskers. Maybe I can make a feature of the whiskers as well. So we're doing this in paper first to see how well it comes out. And then if that works okay, then I'll do it with the cardboard and I'll probably put some extra cardboard behind the cardboard because it's only light card to make it actually work properly. And that also shows me that where the whiskers are isn't quite right. I didn't balance it. So the advice that Aaron L called was don't use Excel or PowerPoint documents for your basic word processing needs. Okay, I won't. Not that I ever did anyway. Um, so let's make this a little bit bigger around the edge. I'm not going to do it super neatly here. I'm just going to leave a little bit of a random as gap. And then I can, if I ever want to, I can make it neater. Do you get, ever get ideas to make something and then it's like, I like the idea, but how am I going to do that? How does that work? Can somebody give me an easier idea to make work? <laughs> and the cat one that I called up was cats with long lean bodies are more likely to be outgoing and more protective and vocal than those with stocky build. I didn't know that. Did you? So I have some, here it is, double-sided tape double-sided tape and if I put that if I put the double-sided tape on in a few patches on this then we'll see if it's actually going to work so Aranel called up cat during the time of the Spanish Inquisition Pope Innocent VIII condemned cats as evil and thousands of cats were burned oh what a harsh man unfortunately the widespread killing of cats led to an explosion of the rat population <laughs> which exacerbated the effects of the Black Death. <laughs> it would be nice if it was just him that was affected by it, but everybody was. Oh dear, goodness me. You don't know the consequences of something when you, when you make a great big edict about something and deal with it harshly without actually seeing what the knock-on effects might be. So let's try putting this on here. So... Double-sided tape on each end of the letters. It's probably going to be a lot cleaner and tidier for a test anyway than trying to, to do it with the hot melt glue. Hot melt glue is great for some things, not so good for others. Um, sorry, I'm just going to check something on my camera. Um... That probably works a bit better for you. I uh, just, I was quite bleached out. Considering that I'm, I keep forgetting that when some, something's in a smaller window, you often need to actually boost the lighting 
set up in it. I just need to see if I can get the backing off this without peeling the tape off. Sorry, I have to pull it up close so I can see it to be able to get the backing. Then I'll put it down in front of you. Right, that one I can get off. Now we need to see if I can get this one off. Because it's not all stuck down hard on cardboard or something like that. It's a bit, bit odd to try and get the backing off. It's quite funny. Um, sharp. Well, that might do it. Gareki says, Aaron Alquendi is an astonishing cosmonaut. There you go. How's that for an affirmation? Yep, found it. Found the edge. Yay. So now we'll see. I might need to put this on my head to get the shape right to be able to put this in. Hopefully I won't catch too much hair. It's just because I didn't mark where those ends should go. Did I? About there. That's not really working, is it? I think I'll just put it on as it is. If I can get that unstuck first. <laughs> Doesn't matter where you do it. Right, do it this way. Stick it on in the middle. Get that hair out of the way. Stick it on in the middle, like that. See how that works. And then put that down there, because I decided the shape before, didn't I? And put that one there and see if that overall looks like the right sort of shape. What do you reckon? Does that work? I'm trying to get it so it's not caught in my ears. Or do I need to do it so the actual head part of it, I'm going to be trimming that obviously, so that the actual head shape with the ears is down lower. Let's swap to the other camera so you can see. Kind of works. I'm thinking it needs to go down maybe a little bit lower on the frame and not worry about the whiskers. Yeah. I agree. We'll make it, we'll do it so it's a bit lower. Right, we'll go back to this. Pull that off there and see what happens. Go back to the other one so you can see what I'm doing. I wonder if I can get the tape off with it. Is it coming? Uh, one of them's taking the tape, and one the tape is one of them. This now, if you can make the bow red too, it'd be great. Absolutely. I mean, if it's if it's Kitty, it's got to have a red bow. Don't forget, this one is actually just the trial version. Uh, let's take that shape again. Oh, look, my release paper should help here. So if I go like this, that shape should be the right shape. About there. Get the pencil again. Where did I put there's the pencil? At least you guys know what, what it is I'm trying to do with this. To be saying things like, now just make the bow red. I'll carry that on down there just for now. Right. Yes, the release paper works. Yay! Oh, oh yeah. Okay, whatever. Carrying on with the scissors. I'm not best at scissoring, cutting with scissors. But this will do. I might have to go back to wherever I got those headbands from and get some more because I like the fact that they have bits that stick up 
because I can use that idea, the sticking up bit, for holding up things, all sorts of things. I really want to do that garden fence with the butterflies sometime. So nearly there, nearly there. Right, put that one down there. That's looking a bit better. I'm going to trim around the edge of the, the top of it too, just for the look. See if we can get it to look a little bit more realistic. Just for now. Here we go, up and around. Try not to, I'm not doing it neatly, I'm just trying to get around it reasonably accurately, but but not too bad and not taking too long. Because it's, it's, I mean, it can be boring when you watch someone. Have you ever watched a YouTube video where somebody decides that they're just going to do the whole thing in front of you and they haven't cut any bits, even though you know they're doing the same thing all the way through? Some of us watch those at one and a half or two times the normal speed and just put subtitles on and hopefully catch any important points they make. I don't think some people realise just how fast some other people's brains work. I know mine does, it's the ADHD. I'm going to cut off the whiskers. If the whiskers are relevant, we'll put some more back on later. Because I can I can easily print off some more. I know exactly how I got the size that I've got. And it's doable. So, it's not very big, the piece that we've got left. But it should work. Sorry, I keep on pulling it up too high so you guys can't see. Let's see. Oop, that's sticky on there. That's right, those two left there, sticky on. So about halfway is there. It's got a tiny bit of sticky behind there, which is what I was trying to work on. But it's not really going to, so I'll put these on instead. see how that works. Looks a bit better. I don't know if it's going to actually be worth doing or not, but we'll see. Hang on. Put that there. Swap to the other camera so you can see it. Yeah, that kind of works. I could do it with bigger ears, couldn't I? Would it work better with bigger ears? So instead of it being printed on the sheet that way, it would be printed on the sheet that way, and so therefore the actual face would be about this big, instead of only about this big. What do you reckon? That sort of idea? I mean, if you really need to, I can colour in the, the bow with a red felt-tip pen right now, if you need it. But I don't know if you need it. I don't know if it's that important. Yes to which bit? Rich gay aunt, the yes colour it in the red bow, or yes make the face bigger so that the ears are a little bit bigger. <laughs> it's a little bit weird timing wise on, on Twitch to be able to understand quite what people are saying. Both. Okay. Well, for now, I'm going to have a go with my red felt tip pen in here. I need to put a decent um, zip on that. Hopefully it hasn't dried out. We'll see. Take this off. <laughs> the tape is sticking to me. Here we go, red felt tip pen. It's going to look black because it's on a bit of grey. Mm. I'm on the wrong scene. So what I will do, because I the, the best way to, to print this is using the laser printer, is I will print it in this sort of stuff because it will still show well. 
with the black outline but I will make this bit so it's not got the grey in it because it's from a coloured print um, but being a laser printer it's not going to print the colour obviously um, and when I do the proper one I shall then colour these bits in so they look a little bit more appropriate it's a shame I don't have a lighter colour but you can't make something that's already dark go lighter when you're using um, pigments you can't do them with pigments there you go so that's effectively the current version of it and we shall get round to doing another print of the card based one there you go that's kind of the effect we're going to go for and that sort of proportion of how far down from the ears it is I think that works well and we shall do it with a bigger print for the actual face so the face is there to there so that's that wide so if I get my ruler out instead of I'll measure it with a ruler instead of measuring it with a, a biscuit packet so currently it's about 15 and a half centimeters wide but that's because it's about an inch in from the edges so if I put it on here and go this way I don't think I want it to be 25 inches wide I think I'll scale it to somewhere in between I'll probably see how much of this image height wise fits onto this page and I think that would actually be very effective and then I will do this bit so it's not coloured at all and then I can put whatever colour I jolly well choose in there if I use a felt tip pen as a starting point or if I use glitter or fabric or something else like that well since I've got Mickey Mouse ears well a Mickey Mouse no I've got a Minnie Mouse bow I might as well have a kitty bow hey do you remember this just in case you're wondering what I'm referring to so to me my perception of this one is that it's a Minnie Mouse bow even if it's not it works like that so what we're doing is we're having a kitty bow and ears because kitty's ears hello kitty's kitty's ears are very very that sort of shape they've they're quite specific ah, so we've got a little bit of crafting done I've even put together some electronics put it back together again that worked okay we've had some story time we've had some chat I don't think there's anything else that we normally would try and get done I've even had some of my drink I even spilt some on me wow successful day <laughs> we'll get there We'll definitely get there. So next time, more of the stories. <laughs> Thank you, Aaron L, for checking. Yes, I have been streaming for two hours and 12 minutes, although that includes the bit before I actually start reading, so that's all cool. It gives me some extra time on there. Um, and by the way, if you don't like the ads, because it always shows pre-roll ads when you arrive, if it's going to show ads, it will always do pre-rolls. If you arrive... On stream before I actually start reading then it gives twitch a chance to show you those ads before I start reading and you don't get to miss out at the beginning when I get started or chatting anyway even though I'm not actually reading at that point so there you go I'll get that there and I'll have to work out how to get the the, the shaping and the and the oh that's because it's got the bow that pokes down there We'll do that too. We'll sort that out. We will sort that out ne another time. Not necessarily next time. No guarantees. Anyway, I love having you here with me. It's been a great afternoon. I hope you've had fun. I hope, you, I hope you've had some things to laugh at and some things to think about and all those sort of things going on. Um, but we will get there. We will get there. Um... Shall we go and see if we can actually raid somebody? Sorry about that shelf date. Yeah, I am today. You did just miss me. I'm just about to see if we can go and raid somebody. Um, these are the ears that I had been talking about doing. These are not the finished version. This is the trial. How long ago did I start? I started 
two hours ago, two and a quarter hours ago. Well, the technically the stream started two and a quarter hours ago, but I started two hours and five minutes ago, roughly. So however long that works for you, that's my usual start time. That would have been three o'clock for me, New Zealand time. Um, yes, at least you got to see Hello Kitty. Um, I will be working on a better version of this with a wider face because I think it would work better with a wider face. She's got this cute little chubby face. I mean, so have I too, but not necessarily cute, but a chubby face. So I think it would work better with wider ears, a wider shape for that. And um, do it so that it's not the, the dark red because it's shaded over grey. Well, whatever. Maybe do it with the glitter if I can. Whatever. Hi, Squirrel. Great to have you here. And I'm just about to go. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, I'm just going to have a look over here and see if there's... <coughs> um, see if one of the ones I would prefer to raid is available. Nope, not that one. So, Hoot House it will be then. So Hoot House live stream, off we go and we'll have a look at the owls. Don't forget to say um, hi and what you've been up to and find out how their day's been. See if they've been seeing anything interesting, how the horses are, all that sort of stuff. You know, that would be really cool. See you next time. In the meantime, happy reading. Bye.